So over the past couple of weeks, I've been testing my RTX 3090 and it seems to have pretty high temperatures, particularly in mining. Now in gaming, it hasn't been doing too bad. I've tested Cyberpunk 2077 and Red Dead Redemption 2 and both didn't really go over 80 degrees. So I decided to look for more games which would stress out the VRAM more because it seems as though that this uh, G6X is uh, pretty hot and it's been noted by a few sites already uh, particularly Tom's Hardware and Eagle's Lab which looked at the G6X and it seemed as though that that was getting over 100 degrees when they went to test it so I wanted to try and find games which would stress this out so what we're going to do in this video is that the first part of this video is going to be about RTX 3090 and the temperatures on the memory and the second part of the video will be just about Microsoft Flight Simulator because you know while we're here playing the game we may as well talk about the game as well alright for those new to my channel and who haven't watched my previous videos welcome let me tell you about the specs of my PC my PC is a 10900K with 64GB of RAM at 3200MHz and I have a MSI Ventus 3X RTX 3090 in the system now I've heard reports that Microsoft Flight Simulator can actually use 19GB of VRAM but I wasn't able to get it up to 19GB, I was only able to max it out at about 13.5GB of VRAM. Now I'd read an article a while back that flying over Manhattan would make the game use as much VRAM as it possibly could, which is what I'm doing in this video. So in this video I flew from Newark Airport and I just did a bit of a loop uh, to go to Manhattan and check out the Statue of Liberty, check out the Empire State Building and then fly back to Newark Airport. The flight time was about 15 minutes so I think that was a reasonable enough time for the VRAM to get to a level where I wouldn't say it was the peak because um, if you played the game for 4 or 5 hours that would probably run the VRAM hotter so just keep in mind that the test was only for about 15 minutes and that your temperatures could potentially go for higher if you played the game for longer. So to get the temps on the VRAM, I used HW Info 64 which showed the GPU memory junction temperature. Now this is only available for G6X memory, so it doesn't actually show VRAM temps for G6. Now the maximum temperatures for the RTX 3090 that I got was 88 degrees Celsius and I think that's pretty hot for a graphics card. Now I don't think 88 degrees is going to kill a GPU or the memory chips but I think that is still pretty hot because then you're relying on the ambient temperature to stay about the same all the time so the ambient temperature in my room was about 25 degrees and I think if it was any hotter, say like if I didn't turn the aircon on, then that would be an issue because then the room would be about 30 degrees, maybe even 32, 33. Now that's 8 degrees higher, so then my VRAM is probably at around 95, 96 degrees, and I think then that becomes more of a concern. Now Eagle's lab had already said that 120 degrees was probably the maximum that could be sustained before the memory chips or the GPU ultimately uh, get destroyed by the heat. So I don't actually know what the actual limit is that Nvidia or Micron has set for these G6X but even for me like running it at 95 to 100 degrees seems like it's not very sustainable. Now the MSI Ventus 3X 3090 actually thermally throttles the card when the VRAM hits 104 degrees so I accidentally left my card running at that temperature and um, in HW Info 64 it said that my card thermally throttled at that temperature and lowered it to reduce it from getting any higher which I guess that's fine if you want to just let the card do its own thing and let it control the temps itself but for me personally I don't want it to get to 104 degrees so it's something that I'd rather keep the temps down. For me personally, I think uh, the maximum I want the card to run at would be about 85 degrees because that's something that can be sustained over a long period of time. I think 85 degrees is still pretty hot, but it's not going to kill the uh, GPU or the VRAM. Now, I would say in general, the RTX 3090 doesn't seem like a very good card to get, both in mining and in gaming. Now, in mining, 
on default settings, it just shoots up to 104 degrees. So you really have to turn stuff down. You have to undervolt your card and uh, you have to turn the fans on and do other things to reduce the temps. And you kind of have to babysit the card a lot. But also in gaming, uh, I think it seems like it runs fine on games that have lower amounts of VRAM. So on Cyberpunk 2077 and Red Dead Redemption 2, it seems as though that uh, that's, the temperatures are okay there. But on Microsoft Flight Simulator, where it's starting to use a bit more VRAM, it seems as though that the VRAM is getting hotter. So I don't know uh, what the future bodes for the RTX 3090 that if it suddenly starts to use more and more of that VRAM, if it uses up all 24 gigabytes of it, whether that means that the card is going to get really hot. Now before we go, let's talk a little bit about Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I think this is one of the most beautiful looking games of last year. And perhaps maybe even the most beautiful game of last year. It's certainly as good as Red Dead Redemption 2. And I think that um, it has this very photorealistic look. I know people throw around the word photorealistic a lot, but the color palette that they use, the colors that they use here, even though maybe the real world is a bit more dreary, a bit more dark and gray, well, I think that this kind of tricks your eyes into thinking that uh, this is what the world really could look like. So the thing I want to talk about the most is that it's actually very difficult to control these planes. These planes are very heavy. Um, I did not really expect this. I thought it was going to be very close to a driving simulator. And even though you can lose a car pretty easily um, if you're playing a driving simulator, yeah, it's incredibly easy to lose a plane. And as you can see at the start of this video, it was very easy almost for me then to lose a plane. Uh, and I had to um, really control the plane uh, lightly um, and adjust the plane so that I could get it back to a position where it was stable. So a lot of the challenge comes from not losing your plane and I wasn't really expecting that. Um, that is how it is on default settings. Maybe if you can adjust the settings in the game uh, you can make it less sensitive but that's how it played out of the box for me. Now I think this is a pretty good simulator and I think that fans of flight sims will really enjoy this because there's a lot of freedom in the game. They pretty much made the whole world available to you so you can fly from any city in the world to any other city in the world and there are some key airports that they've remade from the ground up but a lot of the other airports are just very generic airports uh, with very standard type of looking uh, graphical assets which is fine because um, I don't expect them to make every single airport out there, but I think this is a really cool, interesting feature, and I don't really expect them to remake the entire world, but I've done a few flights around where I live right now, and the level of detail is pretty good and pretty accurate, so that's pretty amazing that they've gone around the world and tried to make everything as accurate as possible. Now, in terms of improvements, I'd like them to reduce the long loading times. It's still really long on SSDs. Could be anywhere from about five minutes before, uh, from the time I cl actually click the button to play the game to when I'm actually in the game and on the tarmac. So I think that's pretty, uh, that's too long. The downloading times are bad. In terms of updates, there's no career mode, which is really surprising because this is really the type of game that could do with a long career mode where you're flying uh, different types of planes and then you're trying to slowly improve yourself and try to improve yourself in the industry. I think that would be a really cool type of mode to have and I'm sure that they're probably going to put it in there soon but um, they're just working on it right now. Okay, that about does it for this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.